Hey there and thanks for rocking with us. Today it's a great honor for us to show you how to play the whole Shadow of the Ninja tune because it's such a cool song to play. And I especially think that some of you are going to like my parts because they involve very little fast playing. So the first thing I'm playing is a simple melody in D minor. And by the way, all of my parts are pretty much in D minor. Now to make this stand out, you should pay close attention to the slides and to the circular kind of vibrato. And by the way, Ben is a master of that. I'm ending the whole thing by pulling off the B string. And while pulling it off, I'm pressing the whammy bar. And then I'm producing a harmonic on the 12th fret G string. Now in here you need to pay attention to the damp notes. It's a very simple trick, but it's important to make the melody work there. So it's on the 18th fret, I'm picking the note, and then directly after I'm muting it with my thumb. So. And then I'm doing these kind of slides. So what I'm doing, I'm depressing the bar, and then while I'm sliding, no, sorry, I'm pressing the bar, and then I start sliding while depressing the bar. So. Then we have. Now the last part is just a hammer-on and pull-off section, like starting with one pick strike on the 17th fret. Now to make it a little bit more interesting, I'm adding some whammy bar vibrato, like this. Sounds a little crazy when you add that. Now comes a pretty long solo section with Ben, and then we're going to be playing this kind of thing. Now the, the whammy bar work here is extremely important. You'll notice that in the first part I'm pressing and depressing the whammy bar twice. So and I'm pretty much not playing with a pick at all. First pick strike, first a damp note, and then pick strike. Uh, sorry, I, I think I'm not even playing with a pick there. So it's just a damp note like that, and then a hammer on. Now use your eyes and ears to try and determine when to use a whammy bar and if you want to practice only the, the hammer-on technique just try to produce some notes with the left hand without using the right hand. That way you can focus on the whammy bar with your right hand. This last section contains a lot of rakes, which involve playing over all the strings like that. And in order not to get this kind of mess, you should dampen the string with your right hand palm. And also I'm using the, the index finger of my left hand. And we have... Now we're going to be 
playing with the neck pickup and I'm gonna turn the volume knob down a little bit to get a little less distortion and we're playing a an octave slide like this and then in our trusty pentatonic box in D minor we're playing The last part, uh, it's essential to get those double stops down. So I'm actually bending two strings at the same time with one finger. Or actually the other ones are helping. And then some more double stops. And there I'm starting with a damp note just to get the timing right and then I'm playing double stops and I'm playing with uh, the middle, middle finger and the ring finger on the right hand so and you'll notice that since this passage is pretty fast I'm not picking all the notes especially the last two notes are played with the left hand so There are some more octave, no, uh, octave licks. And then some standard blues bending. I'm using once again hybrid picking with so the pick, the middle finger, and the ring finger. Then comes a cool vibrato section. To get this down, uh, you need to understand the timing of the whammy bar there. Because what I'm doing is, I'm picking a note and then pressing, depressing, and then comes a hammer on and a pull up direct, directly after so then we have this kind of thing Now this is probably the, the fastest passage of my solo and it helps, to me it helps if I'm playing on the thinnest E string I'm playing with my middle finger and on the B string I'm playing with a pick. That way I don't need to think so much about where my pick should be and instead I can focus on my left hand which is doing some quicker work there. So. without the hybrid picking. Some more whammy bar. And once again it's important that you can play the notes without picking them because the picking hand is really busy doing whammy stuff. So I'm basically pressing the bar every time I'm hitting a note with my left hand, so... Then we have a sweeping section. It's a good thing to hold your whammy ball like this, because you're going to be needing it. You don't have to use a whammy bar at the end. And we're going to be ending the whole thing with this kind of melody. So 
So thanks so much for watching this video and listening to our tune. And if you got any questions at all, you know where to ask him. See ya! Hey there, I hope you enjoyed the track and I hope you enjoyed Chris's breakdown of all his crazy licks. I don't know what the hell he was playing there either, so I better watch it myself and pick up some tips from him. Um, what to say about Shadow of the Ninja? Well, to play it perfectly, or to play it properly, you're going to have to get a ninja costume, get some Death Stars, and uh, give yourself a cool name like uh, Sub-Zero or Scorpion. Okay, I'll drop the facade. Let's talk about guitars then. Um, for the rhythm parts, I uh, took a guitar and tuned it down to D-flat standard. Uh, not drop D-flat, I uh, kept it in a standard tuning, so the intervals stay the same as if I were playing an E standard. Um, it's just a preference of mine, it means I can use the same uh, power chord shapes as I would normally. Um, it's just a preference, like I said, a lot of people prefer the ease of being able to use one finger to play complete power chords, but uh, I like to keep things a bit challenging. So uh, that's what we're playing in now. So I use my uh, Explorer copy guitar for this one. It's nice and heavy. Um, because it's so big, I didn't use it for the video because it might not fit in the camera shot. So uh, let's take a look at what's going on. Okay, the main riff uh, uses palm muting. I'll show you what's going on. I use uh, a technique where I, uh, well it's not really a technique, it's more of an approach. Uh, I use the side of my hand to cut off the chords after I've played them to give it a kind of choppy staccato sound. Okay, so slowing it down, it's just like this. After playing this part twice with the, that part, we go to So this part's pretty simple, again just a basic power chord shape. After the hitting it twice I just just, uh, I just hit on the uh, root note there. And then slide down back to the original riff again. So. Because uh, I'm using the wrong string gauge for this, these strings are nice and floppy so I can put a lot of uh, vibrato onto the chords by shaking them around a little bit. And the bit after it goes to at the end is... So let's do that again. That takes us into our next part, which is this. It can be quite a messy sounding riff on its own uh, because of the distortion and uh, these chord shapes are very clean, uh, they're sort of clean arpeggios, you know, um, and if you're not palm muting them, they can sound like this. Instead of like that. So uh, as I said, they can sound a bit messy, but when uh, in the context of the whole song, they work really well, kind of like a Meganeth type of progression. And then this here is just uh, 
the octaves there. So it's not a full power chord like like root fifth and octave. It's just the octaves. Uh, and the way you play this, you see a lot of guitar players using this in any specific genre. It doesn't matter. And you sort of got to use your index finger to sort of cover the string in the middle because we're not actually playing that note. But you've got to pick as if you were going to pick all three of those notes, but you don't actually play the middle one because the index finger, hopefully, should be just slightly muting it. Not enough to actually play the note, but just enough to keep it silent. So we've just got these. Just got those notes sounding here, so. At the end of this uh, arpeggio sequence, uh, we just pick those two notes before going to that octave riff there. So you go slide up to it, and then slide down. Because we haven't got time to complete the rest of that arpeggio with the open note there. Because if we didn't put that at the end, it'd be like this. playing three notes in a row, but we've got to cut that short to go. So that's that riff. So after this sequence has happened a few times, or a couple of times, it eventually takes you to... Uh, okay, that bit is pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'm just using a typical uh, fifth and octave shape. Uh, if we were in standard tuning, that would be a specific E5 shape. But we're not, so that's a, a D flat 5 shape. And I'm just muting that and playing all downstrokes, so that's a good exercise for downstrokes. So. And it takes us into this. This bit is uh, quite tricky. Um, it demands you to play straight downstrokes and then combine that with alternate picking um, on moving over strings. So uh, it can be a little bit challenging for your right hand uh, because it doesn't know what it's doing sometimes. <laughs> bit is specifically challenging. Playing three different notes on three different strings. And then back to your down strokes. And then this bit is particularly fun. This is why some people prefer drop tunings because you can do these shapes with uh, one finger, but uh, I like doing it this way. So, got to move up from the fifth and the seventh, uh, fifth and the sixth fret up to the, you know, using the uh, root note. So we're going like sort of five, six, seven, six, seven, eight. So, so that can be tricky. So yeah, that's that, all the way through. Okay, so the next time that we hear the rhythm guitars is um, it's playing a harmony underneath another harmony which is being played by the lead guitars. Um, so it can be a bit difficult to make out what's going on. Um, but I'll show you the lower harmony first. All downstrokes as well, so it makes it particularly tricky.
Okay, so again, like I said, all down strokes, and we just got this no, the open string first, second fret, and the A string. Second on the A string up there, okay, so I haven't played this for ages, so I'm a little bit rusty, so you'll have to excuse the occasional bad notes. Okay, the harmony is uh, harmonized in a uh, thirds, okay? So I'm playing uh, the harmony a third above. So instead of the open string there, I'm counting above a minor third, so it'll be... So I'm on that note there, so I'll be starting here. And it takes us into this riff again. Again, then uh, eventually we end up back into the riffs that you've already heard. Um, the only difference from now on is the very end. So, uh, what have we got? We've got. <laughs> That's the only thing it does differently. So So we just fit in that power chord shape there before ending it. And that's it for the rhythm guitars. Okay, let's look at uh, some of the lead guitar bits that I play in this uh, track. For all the solos and all the lead bits and everything that can be classified as like a lead section, all the harmonies and stuff like that, I used uh, my guitar which was tuned into E standard or A440 tuning, whatever you want to call it. Um, reason being, um, if I had to tune down to D flat standard, the strings would have been a bit too floppy and I wouldn't have been able to get it to sound right and the tone wouldn't have been quite right. So I had to grin and bear it and play in an unfamiliar scale, um, so which in this case was uh, D flat, D flat minor and D flat Phrygian dominant stuff like that. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at some of these uh, evil little licks that I came up with. Okay, so the first lick that I'd like to show you um, is this thing here. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm doing here is sliding into a major seventh and into the root note. And then repeating it after the mini sweep there. And uh, these notes. would suggest um, a harmonic minor scale, so it would be a D-flat harmonic minor. So. Well, this part is legato. And these double taps up here... ...is the uh, 21st fret. And uh, what I do is when I'm doing these taps and bend up, um, I think a lot of people try and just use their finger to pull the string up. Uh, it's actually a combination of your finger and your fretting hand. If you use the strength of your finger on your fretting hand, 
and pull that up as if you were going to play like a normal bend, then this becomes so much easier and that's how you can do stuff like this. Stuff like that, so that's the story behind that lick. And it's one of those licks where it doesn't necessarily have a definite timing. You know, I'm a fan of licks like this. People like Yngwie Malmsteen and uh, Marty Friedman are very good at doing licks which kind of cascade or flow over the beat. Not necessarily the correct amount of notes. It's not necessarily sixteenths, blah, blah, blah. It's just about creating the vibe. And if you can target certain notes of this lick, or licks like this, then it helps you get through it without worrying about what the actual timing is. So if you figure out the timing of uh, where the first note is and then the, a note in the middle and then the end note, then you can piece together licks like this without too much hassle and uh, just trust your own sort of natural rhythm in between for all the fiddly bits. Okay, so the next lick I'd like to look at happens at the end of the really crazy long solo I do. It's like a pentatonic shape, um, which is quite a stretch for the left hand and involves another little tapping lick. Um, <laughs> Um, it's one of those licks that um, I sort of ad-libbed while well, the whole solo was improvised apart from the opening phrase so you could sort of take this any way you want it to really uh, the first note and the second note are the same they're just on different strings it starts on the E string and goes on to the B string I do two upstrokes for this this is the easy way of playing it it's just two upstrokes Or, you can add another downstroke for the third note, so up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down. And I'll just bend it up at the 12th fret there, so. So bend up a whole tone, and then on the 19th fret, Tap it twice, so you've got that note. Tap it twice. And then pull the whole thing up another minor third. Again, using the strength of your fretting hand and your tapping finger. And that's the basic idea behind that one. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna look at is the harmony that comes after the crazy solo. So we bend up a whole tone, a whole tone and a half, let it down a semitone, the string above it we've got to go uh, a whole tone and a half and let it back down again. For that part you have to go, because we've just gone. Play the note under, uh, down from it, slide it up, play that and pull off. Then we got. got a shift to play that one, and then What I do there is when I slide up to that, I slide up and straight away bend it up a semitone. And then gradually hit the target note at the end, which would be this. So we're going, we're starting there. That's the fret. But when we go to the fret, we go, I'll go semitone and then gradually bend it up. So it would actually be like, that's kind of like the result, but you've got to start it on the 11th fret. 
harmonic and try and hit the harmonic there if you can, uh, which even I can't do all the time, but <laughs> when it happens I'm pretty pleased with myself. So let's play that whole thing all the way through. And uh, of course, that's a harmony in the song. Uh, this is the lower end of the harmony, and if you want to figure out the higher end of the harmony, it's just an octave above these licks. So it's the same notes, just play it, find it an octave above, and there, and there you have it. On to my next lick. This happens during the sort of quiet section with the piano and the volume swells. I, um, I just roll the volume knob on my guitar down so I get a little bit of gain, but not much. Just enough to give it a little bit of bite if I want to dig into it a bit more. So I start here again, D flat minor. So I choose to use the box position of D flat minor up here. And I use the bottom edge of a chord, which is a fifth and a, and a root. So I use this area as my uh, basis. So I go. I use my fingers as well for this, apart from the first bit, which I go. I'll just use the pick for the first bit. Then my second and third finger for that, so pick, second finger, third finger. And the key is to keep these notes ringing to get this effect. Try not to make these notes dead when you do the bend there. Try and keep the bend um, happening at the same time as these. And then this is all just about uh, phrasing and rhythm. To certain notes, I just make a little bit more aggressive to try and, you know, put some emotional content in it. And then that one is a bit more gentle at the end. And then Chris takes over with his lick. Um, licks like these um, are always hard to replicate exactly because um, they don't necessarily stick exactly to the beat. Like I was saying earlier with the first lick I was showing you, um, a lot of this stuff is just down to personal taste and how you're feeling at the time. So it's more important to get the vibe of something across and make it flow in your own way rather than worry too much about the actual timing. Okay, the next bit we're looking at is a harmony which I do with Chris. Um, as you saw in Chris's section, he uses the whammy bar. Um, to accentuate his phrase there. Um, I'm just playing it straight, no whammy bar, I'm playing it like this, so... So, pretty simple stuff, um, put some heavy vibrato in the main starting note, so the... So it's a case of a pull-off there. And then your pick uh, needs to land on the string the same time as your finger meets the right note, so... When I get to the end, I just make the vibrato sort of pulse along with the beat to go along with the heavy chugging downstrokes of the main riff. Right, now we're going to look at uh, my last main solo, which is uh, the last verse in the song, I guess. I uh, echo Chris's earlier phrase here and uh, try and add my own thing to it and uh, follow the melody in uh, a way that I thought um, felt good. 
This part is just following the notes diatonically in the D flat minor scale. That's D flat there. And the note at the end, I use what I call classical vibrato, this sort of side to side stuff. Slide down to the 11th fret from above, a very Steve Vai type thing to do. I like this lick because it sort of kind of steps down in an unusual way. Instead of going like down a scale, it's like it's like a more interesting way to sort of get around. And then a kind of aggressive little vibrato there. And then another. Vi techniques rearing their head again. For that bend, notice how I scraped the pick through. A lot of people call that raking. Uh, rake is in R A K E. Because I guess it's like a garden rake, raking up leaves and you're sort of scraping through the strings there. And then this. So after this, after that bend, I've got to slide up, slide up the B string there to hit that note. And the very end, I go. And that's actually the last note of my solo, and it sort of fades out, and then the, the end guitar harmony replaces it. Oops. So when you bend up a whole tone, just go straight up another semitone, so without letting it down. Like that. And the very end is made up of harmony that me and Chris do, and I play the lower harmony, which is... So it just climbs up through the scale diatonically, starting on D flat. And then we repeat that note bend up a whole tone to the end note and that's where you breathe a sigh of relief and say thank god the song is over. So I hope this has all made sense and uh, you've enjoyed the licks that we've been showing you. Um, thanks for watching.